In his groundbreaking 1899, The Theory of the Leisure Class, the iconoclastic economist and social theorist Thorstein Veblen subjected the conspicuous habits and economic behaviors of the wealthy upper classes to a searing anthropological scrutiny. Veblen's sardonic yet keenly insightful treatise laid bare the underlying motivations propelling the ostentatious displays of affluence and unproductive wastefulness so prevalent among the leisure set of the modern industrial epoch. His trenchant critique provided an illuminating window into the lingering financial ideals and atavistic economic inclinations that endured despite the rapidly advancing productive capabilities sweeping American society. Central to Veblen's observations and dissections was the existence of a wholly separate leisure class strata, one defined precisely by its complete exemption from the world of productive labor. This coterie of economic rentiers instead derived purpose and identity through emphatic public demonstrations of their utter detachment from the burgeoning industrial occupations via the intertwined practices of conspicuous leisure and conspicuous consumption. In Veblen's estimation, these overt ritualistic exhibitions of wasteful expenditure and unproductive indolence stemmed from the proprietary cultural norms and value systems bequeathed by humanity's primitive socio-economic phases, fixated on ownership, domination, and the maintenance of rigid pecuniary distinctions between classes. As human communities gradually transitioned from nomadic hunter-gatherer subsistence towards settled agrarian lifeways, Veblen posited, surpluses of accumulated wealth enabled the initial bifurcation of society into a leisure class and an industrious working class. Those amassing sufficiently expansive property and capital reserves could then utterly extricate themselves from all requirements of daily labors. Instead, this emergent leisure set channeled their fiscal efforts into obvious public exhibitions and ostentatious demonstrations flatly proclaiming their tritium of productive labor through lavish expenditures and highly visible idleness. For the entrenched leisure class of the Gilded Age, unabashed overt demonstrations of their boundless capacity to squander precious time and resources in an unproductive manner became a paramount means to acquire and signal social esteem, reputability, and elevated standing. The pursuit of such outwardly visible examples of rampant leisure took myriad forms, attending opulent entertainments, the cultivation of economically inefficient esoteric knowledge and skill sets, or simply whiling away endless hours avoiding any association whatsoever with useful work. Through these tangible displays, the leisure class could overtly posture and signal their supposed dominance and superiority. Complementing these public demonstrations of unproductive listlessness was the widespread practice Veblen memorably dubbed conspicuous consumption. The expansive spending on lavish superfluous luxuries and gaudily excessive accoutrements carried out expressly for the purpose of exhibition and capital showmanship, rather than pragmatic utility or subsistence needs. From ornate vestments and jewelry to the erection and maintenance of opulent private estates overseen by liveried domestic staffs, the unproductive expenditures of the leisure class emerged as a means to ostentatiously flaunt their economic potency, while reinforcing ossified invidious distinctions separating them from the pecuniary have-nots in perpetuity. In Veblen's unsparing assessment, the pervasive behavioral patterns shaping the economic thought and expenditure habits of the entrenched leisure classes amounted to mere opportunistic revivals of the predatory norms, customs, and value systems that reigned during the primordial accretive epochs of human socioeconomic development. Defined by ceaseless cycles of pillaging, violent subjugation, and the perpetuation of mastery through domination rather than industrious economic application. The steadfast accumulation of ever more property existing solely for overt exhibition enabled the perpetuation of these impulses and proclivities deeply rooted in the most barbaric atavist stages of cultural evolution, stubbornly persisting into the high ebbs of the pragmatic industrial age. Veblen's lacerating scrutiny took particular aim at the pronounced distortions of cultural conventions, arbitrary honorific standards of beauty and propriety, and the widespread enabled philistinism perpetuated by the manners and mores of the leisure class across countless spheres, from etiquette and aesthetic taste to expectations of domestic servitude. Their extravagant vestmental expectations, Byzantine ritualistic regimes enforced upon household staff, an ostentatious curation of esoteric skill sets and antiquated intellectual pursuits utterly extraneous to the productive creation of economic value, were decried as far worse than simply frivolous indulgences. Rather, Veblen asserted, these impulses actively subverted and sabotaged society's concurrently burgeoning industrial development potentials by perniciously corrupting the cultural milieu and incentive structures. Moreover, the pomp, 
prestige, and hallowed cultural currency attached to leisure and conspicuous consumption among the entrenched property dynastic gentry, became frequently aped and emulated by the lower economic tiers perpetually. Profoundly corrosive modes of status signaling and upward social climbing through ostentatious materialistic emulation saw the emerging bourgeois, petit bourgeois, and working masses alike methodically redirecting their financial efforts away from prudence, investment, or the replenishment of productive capital and toward gaudy public expenditures utterly divorced from economic rationality or practical utility. These cycles entrenched over successive generations a profound misallocation and diversion of socio-economic resources into infinitely recurring planes of empty exhibitionism, invidious perpetuation, and socio-cultural stasis calcified by the intransigence of proprietary interests. And yet, despite Veblen's unmistakable relish in satirical excoriation of the entrenched leisure class predilections and their accompanying deleterious impacts, his overarching analysis maintained a distinct undercurrent of optimism regarding the potentials harbored in the concurrent ascendance of industrial capitalism's competing modes of economic thought and social organization. He identified the broad diffusion of industrial capitalism's ethos of gritty pragmatism, compulsory empiricism, and relentless productive output as pivotal sociocultural developments capable of systematically outcompeting and ultimately curtailing the wasteful conspicuous practices and antiquated fatuous conventions he so vividly lambasted. The steady emergence of entrepreneurial businessmen, technical savants, design engineers, and efficiency-oriented professional industrial managers fostered new normative modes of economic thought and vocational habits grounded in tangible productive effort rather than rentiership or proprietary theatrics. If the leisured barbarian proprieties represented the final ossified survival mechanisms of implacably degenerative atavisms, the forward operating utilitarian occupational modalities and empirical mindsets of the ascendant capitalist organizational classes signaled the cultural embrace of economically rational values like productive efficiency, technical competence, labor discipline, and objective meritocracy uncoupled from inherited distinctions of birth. From broader political, socio-economic, and epistemological perspectives, Veblen's sweeping theoretical critique contained profound implications regarding the inexorably deleterious impacts wrought by the perpetuation of stultifying hierarchies, arbitrary social stratifications, and inherited cultural value systems predicated upon predation over pragmatism, systems that regressively subverted the increasingly productive industrial potentials of modern economic life. His forceful systematic repudiation of the proprietary archisms personified and embodied by the economically parasitic yet socially preeminent leisure class, highlighted fundamental dilemmas and inquiries into the optimal organization of economic activity and the equitable distribution of a modern industrial society's tangible output across its populace. By graphically eviscerating and laying bare the conspicuous habits, wasteful expenditures, venalities, and toxic elitist pretensions that ensured the unearned perpetuation of the landed rentier class's vaunted preeminence, Veblen assailed the core legitimacy and assumed natural superiority enjoyed by an economic element whose productive utility was not merely dubious, but antithetical and outright detrimental to industrial economic development. In the process, his searing observations raised fundamental questions regarding the validity and longevity of archaic socio-economic orders characterized by rigid hereditary hierarchies, proprietary ownership norms and rent-tenured extractive mechanisms, and systems of ascriptive distinction utterly decoupled from the measurable virtues of productive effort, performance output, or meritorious achievement. Many of his key observations about conspicuous consumption and the perpetuation of wasteful expenditures aimed at emulation and unenviable distinctions have taken on renewed relevance in the age of social media. The rise of platforms like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok have created entirely new digital arenas for conspicuous leisure and conspicuous consumption to play out in full public view on a massive scale. The ceaseless digital sharing of meticulously curated visuals and experiences fixated on luxury goods, lavish vacations, exclusive social events, and other markers of elevated socioeconomic status represents a 21st century evolution of the leisured practices Veblen satirized. Individuals can now endlessly post appearances of leading impeccably privileged lifestyles freed from labor in an attempt to publicly signal their exemption from productive occupations. Similarly, social media's profusion of influencers and creators celebrating acquisitive materialism 
Opulent displays of wealth and ideals of consumerist abundance have amplified the impacts of conspicuous consumption Veblen originally identified. The digital spotlight and monetization surrounding depictions of unrestrained shopping, unboxing expensive goods, and showcasing costly possessions incentivizes these behaviors as new paths toward gaining status, publicity, and invidious distinction. From fashion and beauty personalities to celebrities offering glimpses into their luxurious residences and lavish jet setting, the contemporary social media environment provides an unprecedented promotional mechanism for the extremely conspicuous and ostentatious expenditures previously confined to the 19th century leisure set. These images and depictions are seamlessly integrated into the daily media flows consumed by all socio-economic classes, catalyzing perpetual cycles of upward emulation despite widespread stagnation in real wage growth. It could be said that social media has emerged as the modern-day digital coliseum and theater for rapacious consumerism to be put on perpetual display. The relentless agonistics of depicting elite lifestyles sumptuous in waste and wants for nothing nestle perfectly into Veblen's archetype of the leisure class, signaling their separation from productive pursuits. While technology has radically transformed how these dynamics play out, the underlying human behavioral impulses he identified remain deeply embedded. In its fullest context, Veblen's seminal epical indictment served as both a damning denouncement of extant retrograde economic conventions and incentive models premised upon the perpetuation of conspicuous waste. While simultaneously projecting an optimistic outlook regarding their historically inevitable displacement by ascending industrial norms. Over a century later, his groundbreaking anthropological lens continues providing vital insights into the enduring human predilections, underlying economic behavior in a new digital age. Please remember to like and subscribe for more thought engineering from Polytechnica. Thank you.